What's the deal, my people? You know it is Don Tony Teflon, and I'm back at you with another one. And this one is Tabitha's Journey. We've seen her digging a hole, trying to figure out where these wires are coming from, and that turned into a vision of her walking up some steps. In this video, I'll explain exactly what's going on on both fronts. What up to my thugs, nerds, freaks, and geeks? You're now rocking with the best of Don Tony Teflon. If you can, please subscribe and click that bell so you can be notified every time I drop a new video. As always, 500 is the like goal. If this video receives 500 likes, I will give a subscriber who leaves a comment on this video one month of epics now free. Gotta be in it to win it. We're going to go over exactly what's going on with Tabitha in this video. I'm excited to do this video. I like her character. I like the actress who plays her. So really, let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. Now, in order to understand exactly why this is going on and why this is taking place, we have to look back and see exactly what led this person to this point to get them doing what they're doing. That's how you fill in the gaps and figure out exactly what's going on. So the first question you have to ask is, why is she digging this hole? Let's go back and look at the, the time that she goes into the store with her son, Ethan. Hey, don't touch anything. Why? Because this, this used to belong to all the people. The people who lived here? Mm-hmm. So she tells Ethan not to touch anything. And he asked her why. He says, because this stuff belonged to the people who used to live here. So all this stuff is from people who used to live in the town. That's what they're assuming at this particular point. And it's a very good chance that that is the case, that all these things are from people who live there. We've seen Boyd is the one who set this up, who had everyone put all their stuff together so that they can just share everybody's wealth so that someone wasn't just hoarding one thing to spread it out throughout the community so that's why this initially was set up but while she's looking something catches her eye and she goes and she reaches over and she grabs a bracelet and it's this bracelet after she picks it up and she looks at it that causes a stir inside of her she shakes her head. She can't believe what she's seeing at this particular time. And that would be our first clue, the bracelet. So now that we know about the bracelet, we have to understand the significance of the bracelet in order to understand why it's important. So now we have to look back at exactly the story that we heard behind this bracelet. What's going on? Okay. Do you remember the bracelet I made you? The what? The bracelet. I made you after our first few dates. From uh, the laces of your father's boots. Yeah, of course I remember. Okay. Remember you lost it at the hospital the night Julie was born? Okay. Turn around, look what's sitting there. That's when she shows him the bracelet. He says that can't be sure if it's the same one but she knows specifically that it is because she made a mistake on making it and she thought that would ruin it so we learned that this is the actual bracelet and the clues we get from it was it was made from his father's shoelaces number two he lost it and when did he lose it when julie was born at the hospital so if we're looking at the natural answer what it should be like in the real world what would this be we would have to say that most likely the person that found it in the hospital somehow wound up in this situation somehow that person wound up in this same place and that explains exactly why this bracelet would be there that would be the natural answer but since we're dealing with unnatural things here we can't say that's what it's going to be It's impossible. Everything about this is impossible. That doesn't make any sense. Those wires don't make sense. 
We may not be able to find out how this got here, but we can find out where those wires go. So we know why she's digging the hole. She wants to find out where the wires are going, but it brings up two mysteries here that have to be solved by her digging this hole. Number one is where the wires go and how the power is happening to be in this town. And number two would be dealing with the bracelet situation and how this bracelet got there. Now that also brings up something that she said, Julie has something to do with Julie. Now Julie has two important interactions in this show. Julie has been upset this whole time because she knew that her family was breaking up. And it's with Julie that Tabitha explains exactly why they're breaking up. And the phone rang. I reached for the diaper and your father reached for the phone and We just turned for one second. Just one fucking second. And he rolled off the table. Your father is the love of my life. But sometimes I see him and... I hear the fucking phone ring. So we find out how her son died and we also find out exactly why they're breaking up. It's her. She can't get over the fact that the kid died. And every time, sometimes, when she looks at her husband, it reminds her of the phone ringing. So partially, she blames him. She blames him for the son dying because he's the one who reached for the phone. She says, I reached for the diaper, he reached for the phone. And that's what the hang up is, him reaching for the phone. So that's the one interaction with Julie that's important, but I told you there was two interactions with Julie that was important that explain this situation. And this is the second one. Julie. What are you doing? Don't you recognize me? So Julie is the only one in this family that talked directly to one of these aliens. And it says to her, Julie, don't you recognize me? And you can look in her face that she seems like she does recognize this kid at this particular time. That is all I need. I can tell you exactly what's going on in this dream sequence and exactly what she's going to find at the bottom of this hole. So her nightmare sequence starts up with her digging the hole. So obviously... It has something to do with the hole. That's what they want you to focus on. That's where they're trying to point you at in the direction of this hole. The first thing we hear is a horn blow. Now I'll get, come back to the horn in a little bit, but I will explain to you exactly what that sound is. That's the first thing we see. After that, as she travels up the steps a little bit further, that's when we see Ethan's toys. And she specifically calls them Ethan's toys. And then she tells him to pick up the toys as she picks up a couple of things and then continues up the steps. So let's talk about those toys real quick. They are the same exact toys that we see in episode one. You're gonna be okay. The secret fairies are on their way back from the Lake of Tears. They're gonna fix you. No. The monster's claws went too deep. So in this story that she's supposedly supposed to be making up, she's saying that there are things called the secret fairies. And they're on their way back from the Lake of Tears. And they're supposed to fix this person right here. And they say, can't. The monster's claws cut too deep. That's funny because these monsters seem to kill with their claws also. Tell my friends I'll miss them. Tell my parents I said goodbye. Very interesting how she says, tell my parents I said goodbye. And now we hear the story of Jim and Tabitha, how they lost their child. And the fairies are coming from the Lake of Tears, right? They're going to make them better. Sorry, buddy. Norman's dead. When you're dead, you're gone. So she says, sorry buddy, when you're dead, you're gone. But it's funny that the alien that tried to communicate with her was trying to pretend to be her brother. 
brought back to life. Another thing we hear about this is the Lake of Tears. What is the Lake of Tears? Is there a Lake of Tears in real life in this show? And yes, there is. I saw the Lake of Tears. It was a drawing on the wall. There were so many drawings on the wall. So the Lake of Tears in this story is Victor's room. And he's seen all the drawings on the wall from the Lake of Tears. Now before we go further, let's go back. Let's talk about the sound that Tabitha heard. So that does sound exactly like the sound that we hear Boyd hear when he's in the tent. And we know it ties into Boyd because we see her kick over the bottle that Boyd found with a date inside of it. And this is the exact same date that appears behind her head while she's walking up the steps. So what's the significance of this date? Now I looked this up myself, but my boy Mirage the Hustler also put it on my comment section. So let's give a shout out to him for doing his research. So it says right here. An early example of speculation over extraterrestrial visitors can be found in the French newspaper Le Pays which on June 17, 1864, published a story about two American geologists who allegedly discovered an alien-like creature, a mummified three-foot-tall hairless humanoid with a trunk-like appendage on its forehead inside a hollow egg-shaped structure. Another way we know that this is connected to Boyd is what happens to her when she walks up the steps. When she walks up the steps, you can see she's looking up and a light is shined into her face. Just like the episode ended with Boyd looking up and the light being shined into his face. Next thing we see is more pictures from Victor. But the thing that I want you to recognize, and I'll go over all these pictures, I promise you, but just a couple of ones I wanna recognize here is they keep showing one picture in particular in this episode. And that is the picture of the spider with the water falling. What they try to do is distract you from that actual picture by showing other pictures, showing them flipping through other pictures. In the beginning, it's right on the bottom of the screen. And again, as they flip through the pictures, it's at the bottom of the screen until the last shot they show her actually holding that picture of that spider. So why is that important? Let me play you this clip and dub over the part of the Lake of Sorrow story that I didn't play yet. But somebody screamed because the spider can jump from the ceiling. So that explains what was happening to Boyd at the end of the episode, but then we still have the question, what is she going to find at this hole what's going to be down there in the hole that she's going to find and i think we have to go to another one of ethan's stories to understand exactly what that's going to be what in one of the big piles of stuff there was the map of the rainbow sky so the lonely dragon gave it to the chromonacle and then she wasn't lost anymore so maybe we'll find a map in here yeah so when I look at this whole story about the lonely dragon, he's talking about having things that people did not want, that people thought were garbage, but to him was treasure. And I think that's what we could figure out exactly what's going on here. When that person found the map, they were ready to go home of the rainbow sky. When we look at that situation right then, and we look at what myths and are in this world. Myths are things that Humans can't explain, so they make up things about them. That's what they do about the gods, and that's what they say. So when you look at these stories about the rainbow bridge and how it can transport people around, really, it's not a rainbow bridge, but most likely a wormhole. So when I look at this situation, what I think that she's going to find in this thing is some type of wormhole technology that will transport her to see her dead son has to be something like that again you tell me what you think in the comment section 
And if you like the way I do this, please thumbs up this, spread this across the realm, and as always, subscribe. And until next time, you know who it is. Peace and stay sexy.